Cool. All right, here we are, uh, lab two, heart and mediastinum. Um, this is sort of where we're picking up from last time. We are looking at the mediastinum in situ, um, where you can see the heart, some of the structures that are posterior to the heart, and then the structures that are superior up here. That's going to be the mediastinum work for today. Um, so you'll remember from last time our um, phrenic nerve, which ran along this surface. And you know, let me just turn the label on there. Go back to that. Um, so the phrenic nerve that was anterior to the root of the lung um, on both sides. So this was root of the lung structures here. And phrenic nerve was in front uh, on both sides. Here's the other phrenic. Um, and then uh, we're going to start looking at the heart. Um, the, probably the first thing to identify is the right and left ventricle. Um, these should be pretty obvious as the right and left borders of the heart. The uh, great vessels that leave the heart at its base, um, the superior vena cava, the aorta, and the pulmonary trunk, um, these form sort of a row from right to left. So I'm um, trying to identify those right away. Um, from a procedural standpoint, that's going to be one of the first things you do is you actually just cut these three vessels off um, nice and close to the heart so that you leave a lot of these vessels in the thorax um, for it to look at in the mediastinum. Okay. Um, then um, after you cut this vessel off, the inferior vena cava, here, um, you're basically just going to take the heart out and then start to work on the heart in isolation. And the first um, thing I think that makes sense to work on is the coronary vessels. It's on the out outermost part. We'll work through both the right and left systems. So first the right coronary artery you can find branching off of the ascending aorta. That's probably the easiest place to find it, um, right at its origin. Um, and then you can push this little oracle of the right atrium back um, and follow the coronary artery. Expect to find lots of fat um, surrounding that vessel. Um, we'll follow the right coronary down and then we'll try and find this branch of it, the marginal branch of the right coronary um, that runs along the edge of the heart. And then we'll follow it around to the backside and we'll find the distalmost branch of the right coronary, the posterior interventricular branch. Uh, then we'll turn to the left coronary, and that one also comes off of the aorta. You can see its origin there, um, and passes um, inferior to the pulmonary trunk, and then divides in two. And then those two branches are the anterior interventricular and the circumflex branch. Um, and you can trace them out to their destinations as well. And then as you're going with these arteries, um, you should be finding accompanying veins with them like gray cardiac or middle cardiac. All right, then after you get the outer parts of the heart done, um, you're going to cut open the um, atria and ventricles to expose the internal structures. Um, and uh, the dissector does a nice job of um, providing you some figures that will show you just where to cut and how to open these things up. It's not quite like this. We're not cutting the whole heart in half. So um, consult those figures uh, when you do that stuff. Um, we'll also look into the atria. Um, and again, this isn't going to be the best view ever um, in this model. It doesn't have all of the internal structures, but we'll uh, try to identify some of these muscular ridges in the atria as well as um, in the ventricles. There's um, names for all of these different um, surfaces and um, papillary muscles, these different structures that are attached to those. So um, that'll be part of your work on the heart. Um, so while one of your or two of your team members is working on the heart, um, the other team members should be working on the mediastinum. So we'll sort of divide and conquer this work. So the members who are working on the mediastinum um, if everything went well with your lung removal and your heart removal, you should have phrenic nerves that are now suspended in air um, running down to their attachment on the diaphragm. Um, if not, that's okay because we can always attach it later, but um, that is best case scenario. Um, then um, the first thing I think that makes sense to work on is the arch of the aorta. It's the biggest thing in the area. Um, your 
um, brachiocephalic vein and your superior vena cava and these branches, they may not be this far away from the aorta, so you may need to push those out of the way. Um, but if you do and you get this sort of space to work with, you should be able to identify these three large arteries coming off of the arch of the aorta. Um, and probably, depending on how the heart removal went, you might have a little bit or a lot of the pulmonary trunk and its branches. Um, if, um, then take a look at this um, piece of tissue that connects the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. This is called the ligamentum arteriosum. This is the fetal remnant um, of the ductus arteriosus. And then if you look just behind there, um, there's a, a pretty large nerve. should be on the um, lateral surface of the arch of the aorta. That's the left vagus nerve. Um, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding that if you just strip away um, the membrane that's covering that aorta. Um, and then if you look at these two structures, ligamentum arteriosum and vagus nerve, um, there's a branch of the vagus that you ought to be able to see um, branching underneath the arch of the aorta right behind the ligamentum arteriosum, and that's your left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Um, we won't find the right, it branches off a little bit higher, so it's harder to find in the chest, um, but the left we'll definitely try and find today. Um, then the rest of the vagus continues on and forms what's called the esophageal nerve plexus, which wraps around the esophagus um, and then continues on into the um, abdomen to supply abdominal organs. Um, the rest of the structures of the mediastinum are more or less all associated with the central um, pillar of vertebrae. Um, so the um, far leftmost is going to be the aorta. The most anterior will be the esophagus. The um, rightmost will be the azygous vein. And kind of situated in between all of them is going to be the thoracic duct. That's our um, one large lymphatic vessel that we're going to find in this course. Um, you can expect to find it right in that space between them. There will be all kinds of fat um, filling this space between them, but you can expect to see it in there. Um, then probably it will be easiest to do this um, neurovasculature dissection on the right side um, because there's more space, but you may also be able to do it on the left. Um, we're going to expose one neurovascular bundle in the intercostal space to find the intercostal vein, artery, and nerve. Um, typically in that arrangement, vein on top, then artery, then nerve. Um, and we're also going to try and identify the sympathetic chain, which should be running vertically across the heads of the ribs um, and in association with the bodies of the vertebrae. And then we'll identify these branches, whoops, which connect the ganglia to the intercostal nerves. These are the um, gray and white rami, um, which are taking fibers to and from um, the chain ganglia. Then um, the last objective um, as part of the dissection will be to look at the um, chain ganglia and try and find branches that are emerging and branching medially and anteriorly from uh, the chain. These are going down to in innervate abdominal organs with sympathetic innervations, the splanchnic nerves. Um, in this region, you'll most likely only be able to find greater splanchnic um, in the T5 through T9 levels. So that is the only one we're going to try and find. So um, that is the mediastinum and heart in a nutshell.